सर सादर प्रणाम आवाज आवाज आ रही जी हेलो यू आर ऑडिबल सर प्रणाम प्रणाम आवाज आ रही आपकी आवाज आ रही है मैं देवनारायण पांडे समाज शास्त्र विभाग बापू पीर जी कॉलेज पीपीगंज गोरखपुर से सर आपका दीन दयाल उपाध्याय गोरखपुर विश्वविद्यालय के एच सेंटर द्वारा आयोजित चौथे गुरु दक्षता कार्यक्रम के प्रथम सत्र में एज ए रिसोर्स पर्सन के रूप में पूरे एच सेंटर और सभी प्रतिभागियों की तरफ से मैं आपका स्वागत एवं वंदन करता हूं सर आज आप अपने व्याख्यान का विषय वस्तु मानवाधिकारों की प्रकृति और अवधारणा पश्चिमी एवं गैर पश्चिमी अवधारणाओं के विषय संदर्भ में होगा इसके साथ ही सर मैं आपका एक संक्षिप्त परिचय अपने सभी प्रतिभागियों को देना चाहता हूं जो इस प्रकार है आप प्रोफेसर अजेंद्र श्रीवास्तव फैकल्टी ऑफ लॉ बी एच वाराणसी उत्तर प्रदेश <coughs> He completed his LLB and LLM from DDU Gorakhpur University. He obtained his PhD in international law from the University of Delhi. He started his teaching career in the year 1996 and joined law school BHU in the 2006 as a reader. He has. written several papers and articles which have been published in the leading law journals of the country and is an occasional contributor to the statements the leading newspaper of india he has also authored a book on the transfer of property act published published by the university book house jaipur and co-edited a book science technology and law reform new delhi satyam books 2014 which includes scholarly contribution from the judges of the supreme court and high courts of the country and the leading academician from india and abroad to so, sir आप अपने ओजपूर्ण एवं मधुर वचनों से हम सभी प्रतिभागियों को कृतार्थ करें मोस्ट वेलकम सर सर थैंक यू वेरी मच पांडे जी नाउ माय वॉइस इज क्लियर आवाज क्लियर है जी जी वेरी क्लियर आप सब लोगों को बहुत बहुत नमस्कार और आपको पांडे जी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर गिविंग माय इंट्रोडक्शन एंड आई एम माय इंट्रोड्यूसिंग मी टू द ऑडियंस एंड वन थिंग लेट मी टेल यू दैट इन द वेरी बिगिनिंग आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माय थैंक्स टू द सेंटर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट सेंटर फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी so that i can uh, interact with you and uh, we can participate in this uh, discussion so we are participating in the discussion and the topic of discussion uh, is human rights one uh, one thing uh, uh, some uh, i i can't exact remember the date but sometimes some 10 days ago perhaps yeah maybe a two week ago two weeks ago um, i joined you and we participated in a uh, discussion on research methodology perhaps you remember uh, there i we discuss uh, several uh, techniques of research methods and how interdisciplinarity uh, is very important in the research whether it is in a particular discipline uh, it may be uh, the research of a particular in a particular discipline but even then Uh, interdisciplinarity is very important 
an approach which is interdisciplinary is very important. Now today we will, I will discuss with you uh, and I will try to uh, have some, my, I try to share my views on human rights. Although I know that you may be knowing much about that, but I will here say something which I have learned from my, um, so you can say, uh, learn from my experience of the subject. Topic is, the precise topic uh, is uh, the nature and concept of human rights, Western and non-Western conceptions, uh, or you can say Western or non-Western perspectives of, on human rights. Uh, so I will start from the first of all, uh, nature and uh, meaning of human rights, and then we will move to the, what are the Western ideas and what is the non-Western ideas about the human rights. So mainly we will discuss the idea of human rights and what are the various approaches, what are the various perspectives. Uh, so I, I will, uh, I will. Uh, I will try to uh, share my views uh, with you on that topic. In the very beginning, uh, let me make it clear that whenever we approach a subject like human rights, uh, you can say any subject which you can say which is a subjective in nature, means which is not purely objective which is subjective in nature, means which is loaded with some value. So in the beginning, you cannot expect that the uh, person who is uh, delivering the lecture, the person who is uh, discussing, who has initiated the discussion, you cannot expect that he will be uh, totally accurate, 100% accurate. So in the beginning, I cannot be 100% accurate. We will start from a premise that may be true or you can say that it is not true. So I am not disputing that thing. You may, it is, I, you wish, you may take it as true or you may take that, no, it is not true. But my problem is that when uh, something like that we discuss, we need a premise. We need something as established. Then later when we, I will be finishing this uh, my lecture, then the complete picture will emerge. So uh, that is the uh, problem with a, a subject, which is a value loaded, or which is you can say value, uh, which is a, a judgmental, uh, like uh, human rights, uh, justice, law, uh, like some, something like that. When we are, we are explaining some concept or idea. Now see about human rights. So uh, uh, now I am uh, I am beginning with a very simple definition of human rights, and then I will try to justify that definition, and then we will in the third part of my discussion, then we will discuss the various approaches, whether what I have told uh, nature of international law, what how I discuss the nature, whether it is um shared by all or not or it is simply a view of the scholar you can say so let me uh, begin with a definition very simple thing as we all know that uh, the uh, very simple thing about human rights is that and we can start from this idea that human rights are rights which we have in virtue of being human that is important now you see, you can note this, uh, this uh, statement and you will find that the every, every word used in this statement is important. Human rights are rights of every human being in virtue of being human. Meaning is that, that uh, being human, we are uh, entitled to certain rights. Being human means simply because 
uh, i have not to prove anything that uh, uh, that uh, for having human rights that uh, this is my human right or this is my not uh, this is not my human rights this applies to me or not simply because i am human being simply because we try to understand uh, in this in this respect human right differs from other rights in respect of other kinds of rights what happens legal rights so called so in that situation what happens that you have to claim it and you have to prove it before the court that yes this is my right and i want this right i am entitled to that right here i want to say something different i am not talking about something which is law i am talking about something which is morality that uh, 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 this is an idea of morality you can say that simply because of being human as we all are human if we agree this thing we all are human so we merely because we are human only because we are human being we are entitled to certain rights and those rights are known as human rights clear Now, now we will discuss this. We will now uh, discuss the various elements of this right to prove that uh, whether what I am saying is correct or not. So, uh, human rights are rights which we have in virtue of being human. So, the first thing that emerges from this uh, definition, if we look at this definition uh, carefully or closely, then the first. first uh, inference which we can draw about human rights yeah first uh, characteristics which we can say the human rights of human rights is that human rights are universal in character human rights are universal all other rights are not universal they may be a specific to a country they may be specific to a religion they may be specific to a certain community they may be specific to certain culture but in respect of human rights it is a, an idea which is cross cultural means it is not uh, it is not that human rights of one particular society is different and human rights in one country is different from the human rights in another country that is very important thing because unless we are convinced this this thing that all human rights are universal we cannot understand the true nature of human rights so we have to understand is very clearly and i have no doubt about this i am uh, i am telling this thing with so uh, and you uh, and you will see that i am telling it with some conviction so my conviction shows that i that i have the confidence in making this statement and i have a answer any query about that so in human rights are the first uh, you can say uh, the important thing about human rights is that first defining uh, element of human right is that human rights are universal rights universal means they are the rights of every human being this is the very basic idea every human being that human being may be the indian that human being may be the a uh, human being uh, living in africa uh, african continent uh, that may be living in united states of america may be living in bangladesh pakistan may be belonging to any religion that is not important may be belonging to any culture that is not important for us so we look uh, at uh, we adopt a cross cultural uh, attitude so this is very important thing that person may be anyone anyone no qualification is attached please note in respect of human rights no qualification is attached you cannot say that these are the rights of this uh, people living in this country no if whatever human rights we have uh, being a being people of this country or being citizen of this country so uh, others also have those rights Uh, uh means uh, it is not that it is limited to our uh, uh, indians only whatever rights indians have as human rights those rights are available to all anywhere in the world that is the point means suppose there is a citizen of united states of america so whatever rights that uh, uh, citizen has as a united uh, that person has as a, uh, a person living in united states of america 
so as far as human rights are concerned the others means we we are also entitled to the all those rights because human right does not discriminate between uh, uh, human beings that human being of this country or human being of that country or human being of this culture or that society this religion that religion uh, so uh, that is why this idea is very uh, when i started um, taking interest in the subject why this uh, this subject uh, this human rights it appealed to me that the, this idea is very fascinating uh, that there are certain rights there are certain things which we have universally which which we share uh, with all human beings so this idea is very fascinating and unique idea i don't think that there is any idea in the world uh, in any other idea which is as uh, means uh, uh, which is claiming that uh, this is, uh, this is universally available to all so universality is the first point that is very important it does not look at the human being it doesn't look at the whether uh, human being belongs to this gender or that gender so it is all pervasive idea number 1 so universality is very important uh, element second important element when we say that human rights are universal rights means the rights which be share commonly all the human beings share without any qualification please note if you have any doubt you can ask um, uh, if we have certain rights as universal rights uh, it means that a second uh, inference we can draw from this definition is that we all are equal if there are certain rights which are called which are claimed as universal rights so what does it mean a second conclusion you can say is that a second point that in, in um, means that emerges from this idea that human rights are universal rights means we all are equal so human rights are equal equal rights so it talks about equality equality here means that uh, in the human rights uh, uh, in the field of hu human rights uh, equality is known as the right against non discrimination so one thing is very clear that human rights are universal rights and they don't discriminate it means that we all are equal also is it okay clear any doubt then you can ask me uh please any some any one of you can uh, respond that my voice is uh, reaching to you my point is uh, you uh, means you are uh, yes, uh, clear na jo mai bata raha hu once you accept that it is universal it means universally belong to all it means we all are equal equal means that whatever rights you have the those rights i also have so so it means we cannot create any distinction between man and man on the basis of culture on the basis of society on the basis of country on the basis of race on the basis of sex on the basis of religion on the basis of caste no all these things are not important when we discuss something which is human rights all other rights are related dekhi there are certain legal rights for example suppose uh, you, uh, you 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 study you sometimes uh, find that there is a discussion on the intellectual property rights copyright so now this is this is uh, a specific uh, this right is uh, you can say a specific to a country and there may be certain differences from country to country so it is a legal right not human rights human right is important because universally it is understood as that it belongs to all human beings and once we accept this thing that it belongs to all human beings it means that we also believe that all human beings are equal as well as, as far as the conceptual uh, uh, conceptual discussion is concerned reality i am not talking about the reality we will discuss that thing in the later part 
what is the what is the reality but conceptually i think that uh, there should not be any uh, any uh, means uh, any doubt on this point if you have some doubt you can say uh, i uh, as far as the i can give you some example from uh, Uh, means uh, the examples with, with which we are familiar you can say that for example aap logo mein se many 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 of you may be knowing about the constitution of india and may be knowing about the uh, fundamental rights in constitution we have fundamental rights so what are those fundamental rights they are human rights the only difference is that that uh, the term used is not human rights but fundamental rights and when you uh, study when you look at the definition of fundamental rights whether it is right to equality right to life liberty every uh, uh, right to a fair trial uh, right to a fair criminal trial everywhere right against exploitation uh, right to religious freedom everywhere you will find that the constitution is using the term in defining fundamental rights any person for example the very first article the very first right which is given in the constitution by article 14 which is known as the right to equality that is starts with this language that state shall not deny any person equality before law or equal protection of laws there is no reference to citizen only what it says that state shall not deny any person any person equality before law it means that you, uh, they, the our founding fathers who made the constitution they were uh, aware of this thing that they are defining human rights and when they are defining human rights so they can not limit it to uh, only our citizens so everyone suppose a foreigner is coming to india He is also entitled to right to equality. You cannot discriminate between foreigner and Indian as far as human rights are concerned. There may be certain rights which are uh, in, uh, means legal rights in respect of that you make difference. But uh, you can make difference, and we uh, do we do make that difference. But here, as far as the human rights is concerned, there is no there is no there is no difference whether you are Indian or you are non-Indian. आप और आर्टिकल्स भी देखें फोर्टीन लेट अस प्रोसीड टू समथिंग लाइक आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी दैट आल्सो यूजेस द टर्म पर्सन ट्वेंटी वन नो पर्सन शैल बी डिप्राइव्ड ऑफ हिज लाइफ एंड लाइफ टू पर्सनल लिबर्टी एक्सेप्ट प्रोसीजर इज सर्विस बाय लॉ दैट आल्सो यूजेस द टर्म पर्सन आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी टू दैट गारंटी सर्टन काइंड ऑफ राइट इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्रिमिनल ट्रायल दैट आल्सो यूजेज दट वर्ड पर्सन 23 also uses the word person 25 to 28 which are the religious freedom they also use the right person every person has the right to religious freedom so yeah, everywhere they means means that uh, sometimes it is we have this idea ki constitution gives the right to the citizens only no it is not correct constitution as far as the fundamental rights are concerned fundamental rights are the rights of all individuals and it is this beauty of human rights that is why it is so attractive idea that it is rights of all something which is all so i when i claim this thing so i am not actually claiming as a teacher of law a scholar of law i am claiming it as a matter of morality i want to convince you on not on the basis of the constitution or law i want to convince you simply on the Uh, on the level of morality that we all if if we agree that we all are human beings it means that we must be equal and we have certain rights which are universal rights and those rights are human rights now if uh, if you look that statement closely then uh, a third uh, third inference we can also draw the third the important characteristics of human rights we can also draw that human rights uh, when i say that they are universal rights so it meaning is that there is another meaning and that meaning is that that human rights are inherent rights 
inalienable inherent rights means rights which we have inherent in our personality which is inherent in us means it is not something which we acquire dekhiye jo other rights hain legal rights hain jaise right to property right to aur jo cheeze hain aap kehte hain na this is my right to property this is my home this is everything you have acquired in the world jab aap duniya mein aate hain then you acquire acquire it hai na whether you acquire it through success on or you purchase it uh, so but human rights are not things which are acquired they are already inherent in us means we born with human rights because that is that is that is explicit in the very idea when i say that human rights are universal rights what does it mean that every person has certain rights it means that every person means it is not given it is not given by the state these note are legal rights are rights which are given by state but human rights are not the rights which are given by any state if you talk about some scholar from political science he will better explain this thing that it is not a state who is giving the right we have this right inherent we have we in we the right is inherent in my personality if i am human being so i am entitled to human rights it is not because i am citizen of this country as i already told you uh, and and if you if you if you want to uh, look at that uh, the the uh, provision of the constitution which i was referring to uh, because that is very familiar we are familiar to that so that is why i am referring to now you see article 14 language again again we uh, let us concentrate on the language of article 14 no per uh, state shall not deny any person please uh, uh, please uh, focus what uh, please uh, try to understand what i am saying uh, that uh, state shall look at the language focus on the language the state shall not deny any person equality before the law what does it mean what does it say it is an imperative it is a statement which is imperative in nature hai na imperative lag raha ki nahi imperative that is that there is some authority which is even higher than state and that authority is directing the state yahan pe state ko direction hai state shall not deny matlab state shall you shall not do this thing you shall not you shall do this thing you can't do this thing you can do this thing it means that this is a direction this is an order this is some instruction given to you so to whom it this instruction is given this instruction is given to the state meaning is that that it presupposes the language presupposes that state is not the uh, provider of human rights state is simply protector of human rights guarantor of human rights it guarantee is uh, sorry you can say it protect it is under duty to protect our human rights human rights are not given by state we as a human being we are inheriting human rights once we born we born with certain human rights and the duty of a state is to protect those rights so it, state is not giving aap dekhi language 21 ki no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty if here again uh, word use is uh, you look at the language no person shall be matlab that is there is a direction to state that no person shall be treated in this manner or that manner it means that there is state even state is under subject to some authority state is not free to do whatever it want that is the basic idea of human rights that human rights is imposing limit on the rights of states so we should not harbor this idea that state is free to do whatever it wants there are certain limitations on the right of state why this kind of limitation because uh, uh, when uh, state is very powerful so uh, state is so powerful today that in history never uh, the kind of state we have today 
uh, in history never uh, a state uh, was as powerful as uh, our state is today the modern states are today because one modern state what is important thing is that that the, all the powers are concentrated in the government and uh, second very important thing is that everything if this subject uh, suppose uh, um, uh, it has monopoly on almost everything so uh, uh, our behavior is uh, you can say that it is uh, very um, intensively you can say regulated by the state so the state is very powerful today so since the state is very powerful so uh, uh, the founding fathers of our constitution makers they they were aware of this thing that there must be some limit on the power of the state so that the state cannot abuse those powers so this is the third thing that human rights are inherent they are, they are not the gift of the state rather they are a direction to the state they pose limit on the rights of the impose limit on the rights of the state now a fourth point that uh, i would like to emphasize here uh, about human rights that human rights are although uh, i will uh, you may agree may not agree i am not uh, talking about that i am not trying to impose it i am just giving you the idea of human rights um, maybe that idea you uh, you agree to that or you do not agree that we will discuss later in the later part of our discussion Uh, that human rights are individual rights individuality is a very important thing in the history means some uh, some 60 70 years 75 years back you can say or a century back you can say if you look at the history so individuality of a person was not recognized individual we did not know about the individuality of a person means we did not know about the idea that we all are individuals means we were looking at the people in the group means that the subject either there was a king and all other all others who were living in that kingdom they were the ruled so there was a ruler or there were ruled we never thought about the individuality of a person individuality means we were looking the people as if they are they are indian or they are american they are african they are hindu they are muslim they are uh, they are christian uh, and they are, they, they are african origin of uh, uh, means they have uh, um, uh, they are african uh, we always uh, treated the people looking them as they belong to a group they belong to a society they belong to a culture they belong to a religion they belong to a country means there was no recognition of individual as individual try to understand my point means our recognition was dependent on the fact either i am uh, i i am uh, i am a man or i am a woman i am we all are men or we are women or you can say we are citizen of this country we are citizen of that country uh, we are uh, hindu we are muslim we are christian we are uh, persian so uh, everywhere there was the uh, our identity was uh, an identity uh, it something like group identity there was no individual identity this this idea that we all have some individual identity means we have something we have some uh, uh, something which is individual to me means you please look at me not because i am indian you look at me not because i am hindu you look at, at me not because i am a woman i am a woman you look at me not because i am a african you look at me not because i belong to that particular uh, uh, caste so here i i am just want to say that please recognize my individuality don't look at me as belonging to this group that group this religion that religion this country that country uh, this uh, descent that descent no i as an individual i have certain aspirations 
So I have the right to express those aspirations and I have the right to take certain decisions as an individual. And that idea emerged, I think, um, in uh, Western countries, um, uh, when you be, be hear about the Renaissance in Western countries. So the basic idea of Renaissance was that, that we started to recognize the individuality of uh, human beings. So there was a struggle between individual, indivi means uh, human beings, they started claiming that, okay, we are as we are part of the group of people, but at the same time we are individuals, and we have certain rights against the state. So, and those rights that we have the right to liberty, we have the right to life, we have the right to uh, freedom of speech and expression, we have right to religious freedom, we have right uh, to equality, all these things. So, these rights we are claiming against the state. So, how we can claim these rights? We are we can claim these rights only when we recognize that we all are is we all have some individual personality earlier this thing was not recognized even in law uh, legal principles also as a we have been treated as a part of uh, means uh, um, means the family uh, yeah, they did not have certain kinds of rights, those kinds of rights, certain rights. So uh, their personality are, you have, you have men and women both have the uh, husband, wife both have the mixed personality. So you know, wife could not be separately sued by under under law. Uh, so this thing was, uh, that reflect the viewpoint of that time. So this thing is important, that individuality is important. Now we, we uh, came to a time that when we are now recognizing that every person has his individual identity. Don't look at the person when you are looking at a person, you are talking to a person that that person is American, that person is Muslim, that person is Hindu, that person is um, uh, uh, man, that person is woman. No. Look that person as human being, an individual. And as an individual, he has certain aspirations. And if you want to express those aspirations, and he want to, he or she wants to take certain decisions according to uh, her individual wish, then I think that uh, this is the core idea of human rights. Once we realize this thing, then I can say that now you are, we are understanding, we are near to our, uh, near to understanding the idea of human rights. Uh, if you look at the literature, it is not that it is not my thought. If you look at the literature, literature, look at the literature of that time, look at the literature in the modern times, modern era. What is important in the modern times? The important thing is the modern times is that the modern time uh, people started to assert their individuality. That as individual, I have certain rights. That is the modern age when there was renaissance. So uh, after that, what happened, that people came to realize that uh, they have individual identity and that is reflected also in the literature. Of literature, they keep English literature, of that was time that they keep, uh, means uh, English literature of 19th century, they keep 20th century ka literature, of they keep Hindi literature and English literature. You will, uh, you will find a, a, a sea change. Uh, English literature, they keep, uh, 20th century ka, so uh, then they start the 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 uh, means uh, in that literature will find that the individual is now expressing his or her own thought he or she is giving expression to her own emotions which were absent in the medieval literature and the ancient literature even aap apne hindi sahitya ko dekhi indian literature ko Hindi, yeah, Hindi literature ko aap dekhe. So, literature of medieval times and literature of ancient times is the uh, means the, and the literature of the modern times. They are very different. In modern times, we know that there was a, uh, there was a kind of uh, 
um, means uh, reward that is known as the chayavad. Hindi mein chayavad jise aap karte hain. To chayavad jab aata Hindi mein, jisme Jaisankar Pasar, Nirala, aur Mahadevi Verma hai, Pant ji hai. To isme like dekhiye, aap jab inki kabitaon par aate hain, aur uske aur aage badhiye. और आगे बढ़िए प्रगतिवादी युग आता है जब धूमिल की कविता आप पढ़ते हैं जब आप दुष्यंत सिंह को पढ़ते हैं जब आप और कवियों को आज के कवियों को पढ़ते हैं और पुराने कवियों को पढ़ते हैं अज्ञे को पढ़ते हैं आज के मॉडर्न और पुराने कवियों को पढ़ते हैं एंशियंट टाइम्स के तो एक बड़ा अंतर आपको मिलेगा अंतर यह है कि आज की कविता में या आज की जो लेखनी है साहित्य है दैट इज दैट एक्सप्रेस द इंडिविजुअल इमोशंस वो इंडिविजुअल इमोशंस व्यक्त कर रहा है पुराने लिटरेचर में इंडिविजुअल इमोशन नहीं है दे आर टॉकिंग सिंपली दे आर द लिटरेचर इज लिमिटेड टू सम यू कैन से मींस दे आर दे आर अबाउट सम किंग और क्वींस दे आर अबाउट सम जनरेशन दे आर अबाउट सम मींस यूनिक क्वालिटीज ऑफ ए पर्सन सो दैट दैट इज नॉट अबाउट द इंडिविजुअल इंडिविजुअलिटी and it it is both in english literature also when john keats says that beauty is uh, uh, beauty is truth and truth beauty so what what he is saying to that he is he is uh, giving um, uh, expression to his own emotion and that is reflected in uh, indian culture also because that that time what happens that their interaction between indian society and western society is started before that there was no communication so uh, since we interacted with the western society english society so the literature our literature uh, that affected our literature also so the modern movement modern india uh, emerged and where individuals started giving feeling to their own emotions jab mahadevi verma kehti hai ki kaun aaya tha jagane kaun सॉरी यार मुझे याद नहीं आ रहा कौन आया था जगाने रात में स्वप्न में मुझको कौन आया था रात में स्वप्न में मुझको जगाने उन अंग उन अंगुलियों की याद में पर मुझे है युग बिताने तो देखिए उन्होंने अपने पर्सनल इमोशंस को सबने व्यक्त करना शुरू किया अब आज का तो पूरा लिटरेचर ही आप देखेंगे तो वो पर्सनल इमोशंस है अमिताभ प्रीतम का साहित्य पढ़िए ये सारे साहित्य जो आज के हैं अज्ञे जी को पढ़िए इतना इतना अग्रे जी का साहित्य है तो इतना ज्यादा वो पर्सनल फीलिंग पर है कि उसमें साइकोलॉजी है उसमें सब कुछ है सो नाउ दैट पॉइंट आई वांटेड टू रीच दैट इंडिविजुअलिटी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट इज गिविंग इट इज गिविंग वैल्यू टू पर्सन इफ यू रिकॉग्नाइज द इंडिविजुअलिटी मीन्स यू आर गिविंग वैल्यू टू द पर्सन and when we say that we look the person belonging to a group only simply then it means that you are not giving value to an individual you are giving value to the people as a whole you were individuals emotions individuals rights individuals uh, feelings are not important so earlier what happened that we looked at the people as a, uh, either as citizen of this country or aliens citizens or aliens nowadays we do not use these type of terms aliens ye uh, ye alien word agar aaj nahi hum log use karte hain because now we we think that we all are human beings we all are equal so whatever what it happens alien hai koi koi nahi hai alien That is not important today. So, ये पुराने कॉन्सेप्ट हैं सब. So now you see that human rights they are now uh, four five points we can identify. Uh, one thing is that uh, human rights are universal rights. Second thing I told that we we uh, that is uh, equal about equal rights. They talk about equality. and third thing is that uh, they all are uh, you can say um, inherent rights and fourth point which i am just emphasize is that human rights are individual 
rights although i i'm not saying that they cannot be the collective rights they are also collective right that is the idea that we will discuss later fifth point uh, about human rights fifth uh, very essential point human about human rights is that that don't look human rights from the uh, from the point of view that human rights are our certain rights which are protected by law or they are legal rights it is not important i already told you that when we talk about human rights we are not talking about the law we are talking about the subject of morality we are talking about justice we are talking about the uh, a concept in the political science uh, and we are not talking about the uh, legal rights etc means it is a subject which is does not solely belong to law discipline it is a subject of morality so if the morality suppose the morality is recognized as a separate discipline then human rights will be covered under that so it is not important for me when i i say i say all these things that uh, uh, on the on the philosophical level although uh, philosophy bhi nahi hai rhetoric hai ek tarah se keh sakte hain ye sare points jo maine claim kiya hum log claim kar rahe hain universal rights hai and they are based on the dignity of human beings the individuality of of human beings and the equality of human beings so all these things we are claiming not because of uh, any law which is recognizing it law is there which is recognizing it for example i gave you example from the constitution almost all the constitution in the world almost all the states today they are known as the constitutional state and what is the purpose of having a constitution the purpose of having constitution is to limit the powers of the state because when you are defining the power of the state it means you are limiting the the power defining means limiting why we need needed to define rights of the states powers of the state only because we wanted to limit it so that idea that we borrowed uh, and we adopted in our constitution is the idea of limited government rule of law what is rule of law that also it is imposing limit on the state that the state has a certain limitations so from that point of view can say that uh, even if the state is not recognizing some right as human rights it all about a recognition first step is that we should agree that yes these are the rights the second step would be that we will then uh, they, then we will expect that these rights should be recognized by law so that we can easily uh, easily enforce those rights hai na pehle to hum pehla point hamara kya hota hai ki first we accept it as a concept conceptual level yes there are certain rights which are uh, human rights second then then second step is now we want the recognition so that we can enforce those rights up now the enforcement when we come to the point of enforcement now we are dependent upon the state because the state is both guarantor of human rights protector of human rights and at the same time state is the target of human rights means we are claiming human rights against the state and we are expecting from the state that the state will protect it okay uh, anyone of you please can respond hai na ko ye baat important that we are expecting from state that the state will protect our rights and at the same time we are claiming the rights against the state also you cannot violate my this right so uh, if, and at the same time we have no other agency uh, other than uh, we have no agency other than state where we can appeal for the protection hum to protection chahiye to state ke paas hi jayenge aur state par hi hum allegation bhi lagayenge ki state ne hamare rights ko violate kiya hai so now you see to now um, what point is that that is state recognizing it or state is not recognizing it please note it is not important my point is that 
I am not talking about the legal rights. You recognize it or you do not recognize it. It is your problem. My, I am very much, I am very much clear. In, uh, I am very much clear that we have certain rights as human rights. Whether you accept it or you don't accept it. Whether society accept it or its society does not accept it. Whether a particular culture respect it or doesn't accept it. Whether a particular religion accept it or uh, doesn't uh, uh, accept it. That is not my point. That is not my problem. That may be the problem of the state. But uh, I, uh, at the conceptual level, I'm saying that human rights uh, are rights. And even if human rights are supposed, sir, sir, certain human rights, they are not recognized by the state. Then you still we have those rights. You cannot uh, uh, write off simply that no, uh, since it is not uh, uh, described in the constitution, since, since it is not given in certain law, uh, it means it is not human rights. No, that is not. For example, I'm giving one example, and which example I've given for uh, some last uh, 25 years also, uh, since I started teaching human rights. Both beginnings of the international law, human rights. So when that time when um, I was uh, means uh, discussing about human rights and I was saying in the classroom that right to education is a human right. Right to education is a human right. Then there was re reaction from the side of the students that how can you say that the right to education is human right when constitution does not uh, specifically incorporate right to education. Fundamental right chapter mein right to education nahi hai. Tha, us samay, 96 ki baat karayam, 98 ki baat, 98 mein mein Gorakur aya, wahan bhi mein start kiya pahana human rights. So, us samay tak bhi uh, constitution mein kahi koi uh, aisi article nahi thi, jo kati ho, ki human rights is a fundamental rights. Aray, right to education is a fundamental right. So, ye aksar, uh, sawal aata tha ki, uh, how can you say it is human rights? It is not recognized under law, and you are saying means a right which we cannot enforce. How it can be human rights? Iska matlab hai ki aap, aap ka jo right hai, wo, uh, aap isko human right kare. Then I, uh, I, even then I, with full conviction, I was saying that right to education is a human right because this right is universally recognized right. It is internationally recognized right. This right is recognized in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to which India is a party. This right is given in the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights to which India is a party. So how can India say that right to education is not a fundamental right? Although constitution may not be okay. But it is on that basis, it is on that basis that Supreme Court in a landmark judgment, our Supreme Court said in uh, Unni Krishnan case that right to education should be treated as a fundamental right. Means what we were saying scholars from the uh, uh, 96, 97, that came to be uh, recognized by the Supreme Court means our point was vindicated when Supreme Court said that right to education must be treated as fundamental rights or human rights. And it is after that, that in 2004, when there was a uh, government of Atalji and Murli Manoj Joshi was, a, you can say, human resource minister, human resource development minister, Joshi ji, then he uh, brought a bill and constitution was amended and a fundamental right 21A was added. And that now says that a child from 6 to 15 shall have the right to uh, elementary uh, education ya jo bhi hai, free, free and compulsory education. Now, free and compulsory education is made the fundamental right. Now, why they have limited is 6 to 15 group? Wo to meri I uh, said that what does 6 to 15 mean? You have to give education the right to education, so you have to give everyone. It's like if someone is 20 years old, he wants to study, he can't study. Or I want to study, he can't study. 
तो आप राइट तो एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन का राइट तो सबको होना चाहिए वाई यू आर चाइल्ड ऑफ फ्रॉम सिक्स टू फिफ्टीन खैर वो तो अलग बात है तो नाउ बी रिकोगनाइज इट देन ऑल्सो राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट वॉज पास सिंपली इट इज अबाउट द राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन स्टेट वॉज डिनाइंग दैट वी डू नॉट हैव राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन पीपुल राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन बट अल्टीमेटली दे रिकोगनाइज वन सुप्रीम कोर्ट सेट दैट राइट टू राइट टू राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन इज पार्ट ऑफ द फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन then the government has to accept it and they have to pass the right to uh, information act it is only because uh, supreme court said in many judgment and very important judgment is the sp gupta case that was very old case uh, decided sometimes in 1986 or 7 in that case they yeah, or suppose even earlier 82 in that case supreme court said the right to us right to information is a fundamental right so then the state contested this thing the state said how how can we say that right to information will be fundamental rights because if the, you declare it as a fundamental right then the people will be demanding information from the state and state has to share some very uh, sensitive information to the people so how can you say that it is fundamental right but the supreme court replied supreme court uh, when a state said that it is not in public interest supreme court said that uh, denying this right is also not in public interest public interest demands that people should have right to access to all the documents of the government whatever decision is being taken about us we have the right to know that so you can't say in the name of the privilege state privilege you can't say that this right is uh, this you uh, know this uh, this document will be not be disclosed and that document will not be disclosed no in democracy people have the right to information and ultimately that uh, uh, right to information act was passed and right to information is guaranteed as a now accepted as a fundamental right this is similarly this is also about a right to health in constitution there is no there is no mention of right to health but supreme court accepted this thing in permanent kartara case although it is not clearly saying it is fundamental right but it is going into that direction so my point is that that i am not concerned with what you are doing what state is saying what supreme court is saying i am very clear that this is my right जैसे राइट टू एजुकेशन मैं 96 में भी बोलता था कि राइट टू एजुकेशन इज माय आवर ह्यूमन राइट्स देन द ऑडियंस वेर सेइंग दैट नो हाउ कैन यू से कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नो 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 वेर इट इज रिकॉग्नाइज दैट आई एम देन आई रिप्लाइड इट इज नॉट माय प्रॉब्लम इट इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ योर लॉ इट इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ योर स्टेट आई इट इज नॉट माई प्रॉब्लम इंटरनेशनली इट इज रिकोगनाइज and that time i was telling you uh, that uh, international covenant on economic social and cultural rights and there is a committee under that uh, covenant and that committee is a, uh, interpreting the provisions of that uh, that covenant and in that committee on economic social and cultural rights it uh, made a, uh, some uh, means in pens a certain times of observations in which they Uh, said it very clearly even that time bahut pehle uh, even before 96 they said that right to education is a human right because this covenant was accepted uh, in force since 1976 so from that point it came to be realized that right to education is a fundamental right because unless we have the right to education i can say that uh, all other rights are uh, meaningless so this is this idea which you can say now here at this point ha uh, ha uh, yes what i was saying so human rights should not be confused with the legal rights if human rights are protected by law then they are legal rights no problem but even if they are not protected then still they are rights not as legal rights but as moral rights and i can tell you that morality is a very important thing of our lives we do many things not because it is prescribed or it is uh, prohibited by law but 
we have some sense of morality which is guiding our action we are driven by our action is guided by our sense of morality it is not our every time in the sense of a uh, law that uh, that a law is permitting this and law is not permitting that we are guided by our sense of morality so morality it is the dictate of morality that we should not be cruel to anyone cruel to any creature law recognizes it or law does not recognize it i this is not my problem my point is that every everyone has the right against cruelty so everyone has the right against cruelty if you recognize it you do not recognize it it is your problem as the idea morally i am convinced that this is my human right so it is the moral right so human rights are basically the moral rights so when i say that human rights are moral rights it doesn't mean that they become less important it actually moral rights when you claim that certain right is accepted as a moral right it is more important than you say that the right is accepted as a legal right moral right are not less important than legal right the only thing is that the moral right cannot be enforced through law through state agencies through court yes you can say that it cannot be enforced but at the same time we cannot say that they are not our uh, they are not rights right doesn't mean legal right here the when we talk about human rights i am not talking about the legal rights the rights which law is giving i already told you that this type of right is not given by anyone it is a right which we uh, we already have uh, we we uh, which be which with which we are born with now the this whatever uh, all these points 5.6 point which i told you about this all these are uh, one sense you can say they are the they reflect the western idea of human rights so now i will uh, say something about the non western idea in 5 minutes then i will uh, be then i will finish it and uh, perhaps time is going to over because there should also be some interaction so 5 minutes more i am uh, i need uh, now in when we come to the non western idea everything this is i was telling you the western idea so uh, uh, in that respect you can say that sir you are you are you are you are telling the uh, you are not telling the uh, human rights you are not giving me the full picture of human rights you are just telling me the uh, western idea of human rights so all this is western idea individuality freedom uh, liberty all these thing your yeah, privacy all these things are uh, western concept and why you are imposing this thing upon us so why we accept it as human rights so my point is that yes it is best and rights no doubt it is best and idea but uh, may it is best and in origin no doubt but uh, actually it is not a monopoly of best and countries because once we accepted these rights uh, under our constitution so you cannot accuse that uh, it is uh, them as a western idea okay they are originated from west but the the the, the values they are talking about they are talking about protecting protecting the values which are very basic to our needs if someone say saying that a person should have the right to personal liberty so freedom should have the right to freedom of speech and expression so it is in the interest of that person that he must have the right to education right to information so even if it is western i don't think that we should quarrel uh, about this that it is a western idea maybe the western idea but uh, but it is talking about protecting certain values and uh, as it is about protecting certain values which are very essential for a human being uh, for living as a human being uh, living a dignified life right to life for, perhaps right to life suppose i am claiming right to life so it is very important for me 
So even if it is a Western in origin, I think that is not a valid point to say that we should reject or dismiss this idea simply because that is the Western idea. Uh, because uh, why I say that universal rights, because everywhere in the society, in whatever society we're talking about, whether it is African society, American society, poor society, whoever society you have taken, everywhere the people want the freedom from hunger. Everywhere the people want the right to life. Everywhere people are demanding the right to liberty. Everywhere people are demanding right to freedom of speech and expression. Everywhere the people are demanding right to education. Everywhere people are demanding right to health. So how, how can we say that human rights are, rights are not universal rights? Although it may be, I, I agree that there may be certain variation when we are going to implement. Sometimes uh, uh, certain rights are not uh, recognized at the cultural level. Uh, in religion, because of, uh, for example, in religion, we all know wh whether it is Hindu religion or it is Islam, Islamic, uh, Muslim religion or Christian, or sub, all the religions, they were in the very beginning, uh, originally they were very orthodox type of religion, all the religions, and they never recognized the equality between men and women. And uh, still we are facing this problem in the society because the basis is that that in the society, in the culture, uh, those who are dominating the society, those who are controlling the society, those who are the dominant biases in the culture, they don't believe in the equality of men and women. Since they don't believe in the equality of men and women, so that is why that, that is not reflected in our society. So uh, that is a, but that is a different thing. Uh, what I'm saying is that that uh, since uh, human rights are protecting certain basic values, so we cannot simply dis dismiss them, this idea that no, it is not universal and it is Western uh, right and that is this thing, that thing. Now coming to the non-Western idea, in non-Western idea, uh, you can say that the there are now as a human rights, uh, the human rights which uh, 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 means which I am discussing, uh, I, uh, I, I, I was discussing, they are basically the right to freedoms. So they are about the negative rights and uh, they are origina they originated in Western culture. But now there are mo certain more rights which are now to be recognized as human rights, which are not Western, which are not Western which are, which originated from, uh, from Eastern culture, such as right to uh, um, social right, economic rights. Now human rights also combines not only the freedom rights, but also the social and economic rights, cultural rights. So now it is uh, simply not a, a, not a kind of right which reflect the Western idea. It is also reflecting the non-Western idea because non-Western idea is what? That now the in non-Western countries, uh, for example, in Eastern East countries from the East or countries from the South, they are demanding that for us, right to freedom is not as much imp as important as far as that we have the right, we should have the right to social security. We should have the right to education. We should have the right to work. So this is more important for us. And as a matter of fact, they are now recognized as a human rights. So human rights today, as we know it, it is not simply a Western idea. It is both, uh, you can say, uh, Western as well as non-Western idea. Up to key time come has the my or jada. आप लोगों को वो नहीं करूंगा क्योंकि आज सुनते सुनते भी ये घंटा हो गया तो आप वो हो जाते हैं थक जाते हैं लोग तो अब कभी और मौका मिलेगा तो इस पर हम लोग बाद में डिस्कस करेंगे तो इसी के साथ मैं कंप्लीट करूं फिनिश कर देता हूं बोलिए आप लोग जी सर हां अगर 
कोई पार्टिसिपेंट सर से कुछ इंटरेक्ट करना चाहता हो इसीलिए ये हम लोग दस पंद्रह मिनट इंटरेक्ट कर लिया जाए इसीलिए मैंने बंद कर दिया कि आप लोग सोचेंगे ये तो बहुत बैठ गए हम लोगों को बच्चों की तरह सिखाने <laughs> आप सब लोग जानते हैं इन बातों को मैंने क्यों आपकी बात को ये कह दीजिए कि सामने रख दिया मैंने कोई अपनी बात नहीं बताई है तो बात आप सबके मन में होगी जी 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 तो हाँ कोई आपको वो हम तो आपका कोई ऑब्जर्वेशन हो तो नमस्ते सर नमस्ते सर विदुषी अमेटा राजस्थान से बात कर रही हूँ सर आपने बहुत ही अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन किया है एक सर जिज्ञासा थी कि जब आप बता रहे थे अज्ञे और महादेवी वर्मा का उदाहरण लेकर के तो मेरे ख्याल आया क्योंकि हिंदी की विद्यार्थी हूँ हम लोग अस्तित्व वाद पढ़ते हैं तो ये अस्तित्ववाद और मानवाधिकार संतुलित करके देख सकते या दोनों में कोई समानता है हाँ नहीं मेरा मतलब यह था कि जो मॉडर्न पीरियड है हिस्ट्री का जो मॉडर्न पीरियड है जैसे हम कहते हैं कि हिस्ट्री जो मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री शुरू होती है सेवनटीन सेंचुरी से मान एटीन सेंचुरी से मान लीजिए या सेवनटीन सेंचुरी से तो मॉडर्न इसलिए कहते हैं कि मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड इज वेरी मच डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द एंशियंट एंड मेडिवल वर्ड इन मॉडर्न वर्ड वट है those basic premises which we never question in the past for example that we we started questioning about the existence of god we wasted uh, questioning we then there be we there was the discovery uh, means scientific temperament was developed we started using empirical study we started using observational study so we started now testing those dogma which be earlier believed to be as true on the basis of empirically then it gave rise to the birth of modern science isi ko hum science kehte hain to modern science aaya isi mein modern literature par bhi iska asar hua literature bhi aaj ka modern modern in the sense ki ab wo purane raja maharajaon ke jeevan par aadharit nahi hai wo uh, actually usme ek alag tarah ki uh, Uh, वो है मीन्स एक अलग uh, उसका फोकस हो गया है दैट इज द पॉइंट मैं ये कह रहा था तो अगर हम अज्ञे को पढ़ते हैं और अगर हम पुराने साहित्य को पढ़, पढ़े जैसे पास्ट uh, में तो बड़ा अंतर है बहुत अंतर वही पॉइंट में बताना चाहता था कि छायावाद में छायावाद पहला वो है जिसमें हमारे जिसमें ये दिखाई पड़ता है कि हम लोग uh, कैसे वैज्ञानिक हुए और कैसे हम लोग उसको विदेशी प्रभाव कैसे हमारे ऊपर हमारी कविताओं पर जब पढ़ा जब जब हमारे जो ये छायावादी कवि थे इन लोगों ने पढ़ा है इन लोगों ने जॉन कीट्स को पढ़ा इन लोगों ने वर्सवर्थ को पढ़ा इन लोगों ने उन कवियों को पढ़ा वेस्टर्न पे तो उससे ये ये हमारे यहाँ उसका असर पड़ा तब जाके आज देखिए आज धूमिल वगैरह की कविता देखिए कैसी कितनी क्रांतकारी है कभी हम सोच भी नहीं सकते मैं तो अभी यहाँ बता नहीं सकता तुरंत याद करके लेकिन अगर आप देखिए तो इतनी क्रांतकारी है कि आप इमेजिन नहीं कर सकते कोई इतना ऐसी बात कह भी सकता था आज के 400 साल 200 साल पहले यही मेरा पॉइंट जी सर मैं मानवाधिकार और अस्तित्ववाद का सहसंबंध जानना चाह रही थी सर तो अस्तित्ववाद के बारे में मैं जानता नहीं इसलिए आई एम वेरी सॉरी आप बताइए पहले अस्तित्ववाद व्यक्तिवादिता को प्रश्रय देता है कि व्यक्ति का अस्तित्व ही सब कुछ है इस तरीके की विचारधारा रही है साहित्य में और पाश्चात्य दर्शन से ही अज्ञे यादि वो मैंने कहा कि ये अज्ञेबिलिटी है ये पाश्चात्य दर्शन मानवाधिकार को अस्तित्ववाद के साथ में कुछ संबंध बिल्कुल बिल्कुल जोड़ सकते हैं मानवाधिकार को अस्तित्ववाद से क्योंकि मानवाधिकार इंडिविजुअल इमोशंस को आपको एक्सप्रेस करने का मौका कर देता है देखिए इंडिविजुअल राइट की जब हम बात करते हैं एक बड़ा कंफ्यूजन है हम ये नहीं कह रहे कि आई हैव इंडिविजुअल राइट इट मींस यू डोंट हैव राइट मैं राइट है मेरे पास राइट इसका मतलब हम ये नहीं कह रहे कि आपके पास राइट नहीं है 
माई राइट एंड्स वेर योर राइट योर राइट बिगेंस हम सिर्फ ये कह रहे हैं कि हमें हमारे हमारे अपने आइडिया के अनुसार हमें जीने दो हमारे ऊपर अपने आइडिया मत थोको जैसे कि आप ए, आप कहें कि यू हैव टू थिंक इन दैट वे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वे हमारा रिलीजन कहता है कि हमको ऐसे रहना चाहिए हम कहते हैं हमें ये मत थोको लेटस एक्स लेटस लिव एज पर आवर ओन एस्पिरेशंस हमें कुछ डिसीजन इंडिविजुअल डिसीजंस लेने दो कुछ चॉइसेस ऐसे हमारे होने चाहिए जो इंडिविजुअल हो जिसमें हमारा स्टेट का दखल ना हो इसमें सोसाइटी का दखल ना हो इसमें रिलीजन का दखल ना हो ये जब आप एक्सेप्ट करेंगे तो आप देखिएगा कि आपकी सोसाइटी में ज्यादा सोसाइटी आपकी ग्रो करेगी डेवलप करेगी वो ये नहीं कह रहा कि आप आपका अधिकार हम छीन रहे हैं वो तो मेरा राइट हम ये नहीं कह रहे मेरा राइट तो खत्म हो गया जैसे ही आपका राइट शुरू हुआ अगर आपके राइट पर वो असर कर रहा है मेरा इंडिविजुअल राइट इट इज अफेक्टिंग द राइट ऑफ सम अदर पर्सन इंडिविजुअल राइट देन आई एम नॉट क्लेमिंग आई एम सिंपली क्लेमिंग कि इंडिविजुअल एस्पिरेशन के हिसाब से देखिए पहले क्या था ना पहले वेलफेयर वाला कॉन्सेप्ट था कि स्टेट कहता था आई एम वेलफेयर स्टेट तो स्टेट बताएगा कि क्या करना चाहिए क्या नहीं करना चाहिए क्या सबके इंटरेस्ट में है जो तो उसमें क्या है इंडिविजुअलिटी को गिना नहीं जाएगा जब आप ये कहेंगे कि आपने मान लिया कि अवर पर्पज ऑफ दी सोसाइटी इज टू इंश्योर दी वेलफेयर ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल तो जब आपने वेलफेयर ऑफ दी मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपुल कह दिया तो क्या हुआ कि आपने इंडिविजुअलिटी को इग्नोर कर दिया मीन्स अब आप जो चाहते हैं कि ये वेलफेयर है आप समझते हैं कि ये गोल अच्छा है ये पॉलिसी अच्छी है तो आप उसके हिसाब से आप इंडिविजुअल राइट को कहाँ देखेंगे तो इंडिविजुअलिटी का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वही यही है कि नहीं आप आप इस तरह से मत देखिए हमको हमको अलग अलग देखिए दैट इज ये आप अप, अपना आपका म्यूट हो गया है आपकी आवाज म्यूट हो गई ये मेरा धन्यवाद सर आपने सर एक्सप्लेन किया धन्यवाद सर और रिसर्च का एक नया डायरेक्शन मिला है सर हमें साहित्य के क्षेत्र में थैंक यू सर धन्यवाद धन्यवाद और उससे हमें भी सीखने को मिलेगा ऐसा नहीं है कि वो वन वे है कि हमने नहीं सीखा हमने बहुत कुछ अपने ऐसे ही सीखा है ये पार्टिसिपेशन से थैंक यू सर पार्टिसिपेट करना है राम सर हम बाल गोविंद मौर्य एल वी एफ पी जी कॉलेज से बोल रहे हैं सर आपने जो व्याख्यान दिया हालांकि सर बहुत अच्छा व्याख्यान रहा आपका ये आर टी कानून के संदर्भ में सर आपने जो बात कही थी ह्यूमन राइट पे और इसको आपने बहुत अच्छे ढंग से इसका एक्सप्लेन किया था तो जो सर आर टी कानून बनाया गया और आर टी कानून के तहत उसमें शिक्षकों को और बहुत सारी चीज़ों को उसमें बच्चों को जो है बहुत सारी उसमें आज़ादी दिया गया और यह कानून क्या सर एजुकेशन सेक्टर में क्या जानकारी रहा कि नहीं रहा नहीं रहा इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इसका नहीं हुआ इसका रीजन यह है ना कि हमारे समाज में देखिए अभी भी ह्यूमन राइट्स हमारे समाज में वो एक्सेप्टेबल नहीं हुआ है उस तरह से जैसा होना चाहिए आइडिया में तो बहुत अच्छा है आइडिया में तो मैंने कहा कि डिस्क्रिमिनेशन नहीं होना चाहिए एक सोसाइटी में ऐसा नहीं है सोसाइटी में अभी भी एजुकेशन वगैरह को उतनी रिकोगशन नहीं मिली है सबको सब सबको एजुकेशन मिले सब बच्चों को मिले सब बच्चे बच्चों को वो ना करना पड़े चाइल्ड लेबर ना करना पड़े तो ये सब की हम लोगों के अंदर ही नहीं वो है वो हमारे संस्कार में ही नहीं आया तो जब हम तब तक हम नहीं उसको संस्कार में नहीं आएगा तब तक उसका पालन नहीं हो सकता क्योंकि ये तो थोप ऐसा लगता ना जैसे थोप दिया गया लॉ ले आए तो लॉ ले आके लेजिस्लेचर ने सोचा कि हमने अपना काम कर दिया लेकिन उसको इम्प्लीमेंट करने के लिए आपको बहुत कुछ करना पड़ेगा वो जो करने वाली बात है एजुकेशन है वो नहीं करते हम लोग मान लेते हैं कि हाँ ये है आप कहेंगे राइट टू हेल्थ होना चाहिए सरकार कहेगी यस बिल्कुल मानते हैं लेकिन कहिए सर कुछ किया आपने बस वो चुप हो जाएंगे <laughs> ये प्रॉब्लम है That is, वो इसलिए हो जाएंगे क्योंकि उनके ऊपर पब्लिक का कोई प्रेशर नहीं है क्योंकि पब्लिक भी उसको अभी तक अपने कल्चर में नहीं ला पाई है जिस दिन ये हमारे कल्चर में आ जाएगा 
ह्यूमन राइट्स उस दिन हम स्टेट को पब्लिक स्टेट के ऊपर प्रेशर डालेंगे सर आप इसको एजुकेशन दिलाइए सबको सबको आप हेल्थ दिलाइए सबको राइट टू वर्क दिलाइए हम इस, हम इसको लेकर प्रेस नहीं करेंगे सरकार प्रेस ही नहीं करते सरकार को तो क्योंकि तो हम ही हम खुद इसकी वैल्यू नहीं समझ रहे हैं ये प्रॉब्लम है इम्प्लीमेंटेशन नहीं है मैं एग्री करता हूँ जी सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू और बताइए बड़ा अच्छा लगा आप लोगों से मिलके तो आ, मैं तो गोरखपुर में था वहां पे 98 में ज्वाइन किया था मैंने एज ए लेक्चरर उसके पहले दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी में था मैं दो साल मैंने वहां पढ़ाया उसके बाद आपके आपके यहाँ गोरखपुर आया तो गोरखपुर से बनारस आया तो हम तो वहीं के हैं आप ही लोगों के साथ के एक तरह समझिए आप ही लोगों की तरह मैंने ओरिएंटेशन वहीं से किया है गोरखपुर से यूनिवर्सिटी से ओरिएंटेशन वहीं से किया है समाइम इन टू थाउजेंड टू में शायद हाँ दो हजार दो दो हजार एक में हमने आप और सब आपके जो आज जो वहाँ जो प्रोफेसर हैं हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट है वो सब हम लोग कभी फ्रेंड हुआ करते थे जैसे अजय शुक्ला है अंग्रेजी वाले अजय शुक्ला जी और जो अंग्रेजी के जो सब लोग हैं बहरा साहब हो चाहे जो भी हो मैडम है सब हम सब लोग एक दूसरे को जानते हैं अंग्रेजी है सोशियोलॉजी है साइकोलॉजी है तो ये सब पूरा अपने फैमिली की तरह हमारे पोलिटिकल साइंस है जबरती है सब जगह तो और मैं तो सब हम लोग का बड़ा इंटरेक्शन होता था गुरु में वो इंटरेक्शन और जगह पे नहीं है वो आप यहाँ नहीं पाइएगा थैंक यू सर बहुत अच्छा लगा आपसे इंटरेक्ट करके आपने हमारा बहुत ध्यान ज्ञानवर्धन किया और वैसे सभी लोग इंटरेक्ट कर चुके हैं आई थिंक सभी की जिज्ञासा अभी शांत हो गई होगी तो मैं अब डॉक्टर अरुण कुमार जी से मैं आग्रह करूंगी कि वो एक फॉर्मल वोट ऑफ थैंक्स के लिए सर को वोट ऑफ थैंक्स दें फॉर्मल औपचारिक धन्यवाद करें ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर अरुण कुमार जी थैंक यू मैम पहली बात तो सर को मेरा प्रणाम सर आवाज मेरी जा रही है तो अच्छी तरह आ रही है सर आज के प्रथम सत्र के मुख्य वक्ता सर आपने मानव अधिकारों की प्रकृति और अवधारणा पश्चिमी और गैर पश्चिमी अवधारणा विषय पर इतना विस्तार पूर्वक और सारगर्भित व्याख्यान रहा निश्चय ही हम सभी प्रतिभागी गण अवश्य प्रभावित एवं लाभान्वित हुए होंगे इसके लिए सर आपको यूजीसी एचआरडी सेंटर दीनदयाल उपाध्याय गोरखपुर विश्वविद्यालय गोरखपुर द्वारा और कार्यक्रम में प्रतिभाग कर रहे सभी प्रतिभागी गण के द्वारा मैं आपको सादर नमन आभार व्यक्त करता हूं धन्यवाद सर <laughs> आप फिलिप आपको भी धन्यवाद कि आप बैठे सुने आजकल कहाँ कोई किसी को सुनना चाहता है नहीं सर धन्यवाद ओके सर थैंक यू सर नाम सर हम लोग भी लीव हो जाते हैं ठीक ओके प्रशासन एंड इन द मीटिंग मैम